Ready? All I wanna do is zoom, 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 zoom with the video games. Just press the play. Just press start. <laughs> Just start. Oh, you were recording. Yeah, I was recording. I'll be done. Welcome to Rhythm and Pixels. We're a video game music podcast. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernet. Every week we listen to great video game music from the past and the present of all consoles and all generations. If it's good, we just might play it. And if it's bad, oh, we're definitely going to play it. And if the episode is terrible, at least there'll be a funny picture to look at. That is true. <laughs> though, though, but no episode's bad. Every episode's good. Every, Every episode is good. Yeah. You know what? Try us. Go back and listen to them. All of them. Find one. Find one. I can find one. No, no, don't <laughs> find one. Don't find one. I can think of plenty. I've, I've been on the internet long enough. Don't challenge anybody <laughs> to find anything because they'll do it. Find that picture of me that was super embarrassing that one time. The that statement you make is that. every episode is good. Just trust us oh, on it. Golden. Never, never confirm. Never golden. attempt to confirm. Um, so what beverage are you drinking? Yeah, that is a monster purple. It's on for hey purple. Isn't that purple? No, no, no it's, yeah, it's purple. This is it purple. This is more of a maroon. <laughs> that is never maroon. <laughs> that this was is actually never. a blue and gold can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With rehab in it. It's yeah, one of those raspberry tea energy. I cans. like. I do. I do like those actually, um, which is good because I need them for energy when I am working out or playing dance games. Which, or just running in a circle. Or just running in circles. And that's how I get fit. Running in circles? <laughs> just running in circles. Running on circles, like a treadmill. Ooh. Actually, I do need a treadmill if you do. I'm trying uh, to get back into the... Treadmill's well, terrible. I well, hate it. <laughs> so, of course, I walk into the house today, mm -hmm. and, and Rob is playing Final Fantasy X. You walk into my house today. Yeah. So <laughs> I came home from work and I, I broke What are you in, doing in my house? I broke into your house to play Final Fantasy. Play your own version with your own save file. Like, is it cool that I'm wearing your clothes? Wouldn't that be a creepy <laughs> stalker? You just go home and turn on your console and there's just... There, your your PS4 game panels aren't lined up as you <laughs> left them and there's save files that you didn't create. Mm. And the character has items that when lined up together they spell I love you. Yes. Yeah, it's like a it's like a big Minecraft stage. It's just like I laid out all the boxes to be like a tribute with your like your your face, you know. Oh, jeez. Oh, it's amazing. But no, no, yeah, you came you came to my house as you often do, and I was playing Final Fantasy X as, as you I always often do. Am, <laughs> and I, I was just catching monsters for the monster arena, and I was telling you all of the things that you could do. I was just getting nostalgic because yeah. again, I haven't picked up the game oh, it's since a, twenty. If nine if it, earlier than that, so it's like twenty before, ten before the remix, before the before the the remake came out, right? Yeah, because I bought the remake but never played. Oh, it. it's beautiful! Like the game was already, I think, just one of the best looking games ever and best sounding games. I love the soundtrack, but um, the the HD remix that you can get on the PS4 now and they, and they also came out on the PS3, which I'm which is what you bought, right? Uh huh. Is amazing. It's just so good. It's 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 widescreen. They they redrew most of the. Um, of the models and the textures, I probably wouldn't notice <gasps> any of those things. You, I mean, that that's a testament to how good it is. Is that you don't notice because in your mind it always looked that good, but it didn't. But that in and of itself, wouldn't that be? It's hard to explain. It's like yeah. they did all this stuff. It looks so much better. I can't tell. Isn't that proof of how good it is? What? No. I, I, I think it is because I'm always like amazed. I'm like, I remember this being amazing. But then I'm like, wait, was it really though? I don't, oh, no. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Like, I'm not dismissing that mm -hmm. it always looked good. I'm saying there's this thought like if I bought the remaster you with want the expectation of that... seeing it look because I didn't buy it for that. I bought it specifically because I was like, hey, international stuff is in there. But if I oh, bought it expecting it to stuff. look better and I open it up and I'm playing, like, I don't notice anything. <laughs> I feel cheated. Yeah, the only the only fun stuff about the international version is the uh, the, the the hard mode sphere grid, which is just everyone starts in the middle or in the middle somewhere, so everyone kind of goes off and does their own thing, and so you can make Yuna a beast, which is awesome. Or oh, and then dark aeons showing up in the post game for no reason, blocking stuff that you want to get. 
that to me is like the only flaw. Yeah. I would have preferred it just being just a one location a one you go lo- to, yeah. or if they were at the end of old temples. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like at the end of the old temples or, or sp- specific new locations. But um, actually there's a great YouTube series that put them side by side of the remake to the old one. And it, they actually changed a lot of the camera angles and some of the stages because it, it wouldn't have worked in a uh, widescreen. Huh. Um, but anyway, this is not a final fantasy show. Until next week, where we'll do another. Here's how Final Fantasy X is going. I, I can tell you more about that. No, um, I'm excited for Final Fantasy VIII to come to be re-released. You and only you. No, there's a few. Of, I'm there's sure a few I'm, of us out there. I'm pretty yeah. sure someone. Yeah. There's a number of people listening <laughs> to this right now going, "The heck with you, Pernell. No, I'm gonna it play is it. a masterpiece. I'm gonna play the heck out of it. Truth be told, I may try it just to see. They won't, but to see if they fixed anything that I didn't like about it before. Mm-hmm. They won't. But, um, yeah, yeah. That, that MacGuffin of a story. And uh, the draw system had potential. Real potential. It, it, it did have potential. It did, did have. I, I think they're, they're going to fix some things with the remake, like how long the summons take to do and things like that. But I, I don't think they're going to do much else. I'm still waiting for 6 to get its true due. That's the most depressing thing. Well, it got re-released on the DS, right? No. No, oh, I'm thinking of um four. Four. I'm thinking of four. Yeah. No, yeah. Three yeah. and four got on the yeah, DS. That's what I'm thinking. Six is the only one that never got a full blown like, like uh, redo. Redo, yeah. It got maybe, it got re released uh, like on the, the PlayStation whatever classics or whatever. Like the, the no, Play- five, no, five had P- PSP called? version. What was it called? The PlayStation like Final Fantasy Chronicles. Yeah, but those weren't but I, I, before I before I, I thought about this, somebody's probably gonna be like, "No, well, Perno technically, no, I'm not Some, saying someone, re-releases." Someone will know. Someone will know. No, 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 no. I'm catching him off guard now. <laughs> if he says if he has something beyond this, then that's yeah. on me. But no, I'm not saying re-releases. I'm saying a, a redo. Yeah. Like Final Fantasy IVs had multiple updates where they did the, we did the graphics, they added content, that all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Final Fantasy VI at best had Final Fantasy VI Advance. Which had a, some some bonus content, mm-hmm. but it was kind of a downgrade. Sound was a downgrade. It had like weird issues with like pro- performance. Were the graphics still just the two D sprites? Still the same graphics. It was the same graphics. Yeah, because with four they they made them like little three D dudes. Yeah, four they went all in. They yeah. got a, a, a four got the treatment I want six to get. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, okay, before we go off the rails any further <laughs> about remakes of Final Fantasy, because we all want them. Because we all love the games. Every one of them. No. Except for 9. No. You shut your ah, face! I've never played 9. 9 is the baby! I know, every, people like 9. Um, we have to say that next episode is going to be a live-streamed episode. It's the end of the month. It is! That's right. Oh, no! That's next week. So, um, that means that this week, this Thursday, this coming Thursday, which is August 29th, if you are a Patreon subscriber or if you're a, a, a new Patreon subscriber, we will be recording that episode. So if you have any track suggestions for us, um, if there's any music that you would like for us to take notice of and play on the show, please email it to us. Please that's hit our, us up on Facebook, something like that. I honestly genuinely enjoy that aspect of the show. Yes. It's amazing because there's we've been getting a lot more just like general shares, which I love. Yeah. Oh, but it's interesting. More active people is great. But it makes you think like we have normal listeners who are like just hey we want to check and send these tracks and it ends up being these awesome tracks mm. that I listen to at work and just kind of chill with but then we have these episodes like hey you know just send tracks to play on the show and it feels like when it comes down to that no one it's like we get less submissions for the <laughs> show than just general shares yeah so if we don't get enough submissions or any submissions we're probably we will probably just do kind of like a free play style like whatever we like um, which is fine Oh, we I play whatever you. we like every week anyway. <laughs> In a nutshell. We have a topic and we're like, well, well, how did you feel about this topic? Also, I just remember something. I got to make sure I clarify this, even though it hasn't come up yet. You okay. Because the world is weird. The world so, is a terrible... world is a vampire. It is a vampire. That Set to drain. Drain money. Yes. Also natural resource. But anyway. Good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... The contest we mentioned last week. Oh yeah, I, I totally had a mix up on that. It's not the Switch version of Bloodstained. Right. It's actually the PS4 version of Bloodstained. Comes Curse of the Night. Everything else is the same. The Curse of the Moon. Bark at the Moon. Bark at the Moon. No. I wish. That sounded like the the you close windows. Bark at the Moon. 
Um, no, so what the contest is uh, a picture of yourself donating blood or doing something good. Well, the do- the picture will be awesome, but honestly, I'm okay with just you outright just being honest and just telling us. Right. You get put into a raffle, and then we have a code for the Switch version of the new Bloodstained no! game. No! You just made the big sub that I just corrected. <laughs> no, no. The- Are you serious? <laughs> yes! I said Switch version last week. It's the PS4 version. Have- it's a physical copy of oh. the game. We have a physical copy of the PS4 version. Yes. For you. The but, Kickstarter version. But to get that, you need to give us your blood. Or give it to someone else. I did I get I got it all right this time. No, you didn't. <laughs> and I <laughs> or give you it not. to somebody else. Blood donations are ridiculously <laughs> oddly important. Like this week, my hope my week got derailed. Oh, that's right. This you, week. you got called in, right? Yeah, they already called me and was mm. like, hey, or they sent me a text, then they called me. Mm. Basically, they didn't have enough platelets to get through the week. For people who need them. No kidding. So basically, it's like, if you can do it, please come in. So I showed up. And as usual, mm. funny enough, they were like, because they need everything. There's, are, like a, are, there's like a board that says we're low on everything. Are, are your platelets as rare as your blood? Is yes. that how that works too? Oh, wow. But that's, but when it comes down to it, the blood is more rare. Because I think they said, quote me, I might be wrong about this, but the blood type is most prominent in regards to actual like red cells and double red cells. Okay, with the when transfusions, it comes to plate- yeah. Yeah, but with platelets, I think it's just anybody's platelets will do. Okay. But it's a much more time-consuming process to get platelets, and you don't get as much of a usage, usable content as you would if you were just given blood. Right. So you and, actually give more. Yeah, you give more when you give general blood than you do when you give platelets. Hmm. Because they're basically taking specific elements out of the blood and then giving the blood back to you. Oh, it goes back. Yeah, they, it, they take your blood and it's run like a trans- through a machine. Oh, interesting. Like a, basically like a transfusion machine. They run the blood through a machine. The machine extracts the platelets mm-hmm. and puts them in another baglet, and then it takes the blood that remains and puts it back in your body. Oh, that's cool. I so, didn't I didn't know that whole process. Yeah, that's why it takes so long. I go there, it takes me three hours. The, yeah. Two, wow. two to three hours to do a platelet. Yeah, you watch, so what movie did you watch this time? No, 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 no. I didn't do that. What happens, I got there, and they told me, oh, we, we need your double ribs. So I was like, okay, well, here you go. Take them. Take them. <laughs> Though I almost didn't because apparently my hemoglobin was too low, which is another weird story. And also I pulled like a cool garbage pail kiss scenario where like they pricked my finger for hemoglobin test. And like for the first time in my life, the blood shot out into an arc. Really? And went across the desk from that pin prick that they Should do. we be con- concerned about your blood pressure? I don't know. If anything, my, bread, blah, 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 blah. my blood, blood pressure is the lowest it's ever been. Hey, I'm going to say, you've been working out. Very consistently. I still need to get it lower, but I got a feeling mm. this is probably just where I'm going to be unless I lose weight because my member. So for listeners who aren't in the know, last October, I think my blood pressure at one point in a weird scenario was like, man, this is a long intro. But anyway, yeah, it was well, like this, one, this ties into our topic so we can we can run it from here. That yeah, is true. Here we go. My blood pressure was like 190 or some really bizarre number. Yeah, something scary. And like Rob was like, he put this deadpan face on like, I'm very serious right now. You could die from this. Your blood pressure is absurdly yeah. abnormal. Yeah, my wife said, you, you could have a stroke right now. And I'm sitting there thinking like, yeah, whatever, we're going to have a soda <laughs> or something. Yeah, big deal. Right. And then, uh, of course, I ran it. I mulled over it a bit more and a bit more, a bit more. And eventually, well, I already started trying to do other things like change my diet, blah, blah, blah. But the big hit was in March, I joined the gym. That was one of the reasons why I did so. The other part was I want to look more attractive because that's what humans try to do sometimes. Whatever. The mm-hmm. point is I got into a fitness routine. Good. And it's – I'm not seeing the results I wanted to see, but I'm seeing results in places I didn't expect to see them. Yeah. So it's a weird trade-off. Like my biceps are getting bigger. Good. And uh, my blood rate – is lower when I do more strenuous activities mm-hmm. than I used to. Right, right. Because your body's used to pumping that blood now that you're... Oh, the cat's in the room. Because um, your your heart is stronger now. Yes. Yeah. Now I just got to start doing more cardio and mm-hmm. get this stupid stomach to go down because that's the hardest part. <laughs> but it basically has yeah. become a thing that I enjoy doing and I'm, I'm looking so, to try to do more stuff with I'm it. I'm so, so glad you're enjoying it. Which is funny because I never expected to. Yeah, no, it's it's like it's like you start doing it and you're like, I hate this. I hate everything about this. But then over time, it beats like, oh, I feel better now after doing it. I Now I enjoy it. And now I yeah. go to the gym 
and I'll I'll sign in and I'll start to get to work. Mm-hmm. And one of the trainers is usually the same guy will run up to me and start asking me video game questions. Yo, man, what you playing lately? <laughs> That's oh, good. They're starting God. to get to know you. I like that. I'm actually nervous. I'm like, <laughs> I thought about saying you should listen to my podcast. I'm like, yes. Don't d- no. Give him the card. No. He must know all sides of you. No. He'll boot up. <laughs> he'll listen to the podcast. Like, all right, I'll come in one day. Like, so I heard you were having girl troubles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, yeah, look I, here, I, buddy. You gotta separate things. Like, I don't. Try I see, I, who am I kidding? I actually wouldn't mind. I just it's a it's a mental block. I know, I know, I know. You want to keep keep lives separate, which no, is hard I, to do on the internet nowadays. But have been sell price. So here's the darn code. All right. So today's episode is all about the workout. So we're not talking about um, games like fitness games, like the Wii Fitness or the Wii or we Fit. We getting fit. <laughs> we getting fit. <laughs> That'd have been a better day. Yo, we getting fit. Two thousand eight. <laughs> um, no, no, no. This is um, music that you would want to play while you're working out. Now, admittedly, this t- this topic has been sitting on our desk for a little bit. Yeah, I'm but su- then listener Alex G sent us that really cool roster of tracks. Right. So I I put that into a playlist. So on our YouTube page, youtubecom slash um, I'm starting to collect just playlists of other YouTube videos of of music. And so there's a study guide. There's going to be like three other um, like focused playlists but there's the there is now the workout playlist it's called the vgm workout <laughs> i like that <laughs> or no, it's called vgm the workout <laughs> and it's all all the tracks he selected i think it's a great it's a great thing yes it's, it's really cool and he has some really banger mm. tracks so as a result oh, of yeah. that it's like we was like you some know surprising we got, ones too i didn't expect and that's yeah. what that's what i think is interesting when it comes to this and well i think i got a film it's going to be interesting to see what we both chose yeah for our track i have a th- Theme that's pretty obvious, but why don't you start us off? This is odd, okay. odd number number seven. So why don't you go? Well, I'm kind of pacing a bit. This is going to be interesting. Like I think of workouts as a form of stages. You don't just go into the gym and start like you know benching like a Buick. You have to lead up to. <laughs> oh, that. okay. I like this. So I decided to start with something that I feel has been helping me a lot when I start my workouts to get into the mood, and that's a track that has a quality beat to it. But, of course, we're talking video games here. So <laughs> I got to come up with a good track for that. And I think I found one. This is from the NES game Roller Games. Ooh. And it is oh, such a the good soundtrack. Junkyard theme for Stage 3. And it's composed by Atsushi Fujio, Norio Hanzawa, yes. Shige Masa Matsuo, and Katsuhiko Suzuki. A Konami powerhouse of composers. Ooh, All right, let's do it. Roller Games. To the junkyard theme or junkyard stage theme from the game Roller Games on the NES, composed by Asushi Fujio, Norio Hanzawa, Shigemasa Matsuo, and Katsuhiko Suzuki. It's music like this that makes me glad that we do a live stream show because we dance like <laughs> so much during music. Like, like yes, when songs like this play, like you and I are just bumping the whole time. When we had the um, the Legacy Music Hour on our on our episode, um, Rob. Switch, Rob F. Switch was like, you guys like are jamming like the whole time. Yes. <laughs> we were the, like, when the yes. music fits, man, you do it. Because it was a video, video conference, but like, yeah, it was crazy. And honestly, mm. I'm glad you said that because 
what you stated is exactly why I picked this mm. in this type of track as my first selector. So you get to the gym, you might have had a long day at work, you might, you know, you might have been kind of dragging yourself here because you just want to relax, but you know you got to get that workout in. Yeah. So when you show up, the first step is to kind of get yourself acclimated into the mood to get your get your pump on. So you want to you want a track that's not too intense, mm-hmm. but also has a good beat to get you moving. But, funny enough, this track has a double version of effect to it, or a secondary effect to it, which is that if you're doing a workout, like what I've been doing with like a lot of these like, you know, kickbox type workouts, yeah, yeah. a good beat is good for getting you to constantly keep moving, even yes. if you start to get tired. Like if I'm punching and throwing like kicks and like mm-hmm. roundhouses, a track like this will make me do it faster. Because I want to stay on beat with the song. And when yeah. you're trying to do roundhouse beat roundhouse kicks to a beat of four. <laughs> You're moving because like whoosh, twisting, 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 and it's oh, it yeah. works. It does the job. Yeah, we used to go to uh, Christy and I for years. We went to this gym. It was, it was a little dojo down the road that did goju karate, mm-hmm. and they called it goju aerobics. And it was just like a big like you know cardio workout like a uh, class led by this one guy, this the most charismatic man in the world. And he had a mix. He played. He had two mixes. He played every week that were like pumped up versions of like '80s and '90s hip hop classics. <laughs> and it was just. And we would be punching and kicking and doing all sorts of stuff to it. And it was just always oh, the best. Like every Saturday, every Sunday, we were just doing it. It was so good. Um, so yeah, I get it. Like with the right tempo, the right music. This this gets me going though. Like and if the, you those need to, Konami drums, oh Konami drums. And I can flat out mm. say this right now: if you don't trust it, if you don't believe this, while this track is playing, even rewind it if you need to. Oh yeah. Go while this it. track is playing, just put just square up, square, square up, <laughs> square and up. start throwing punches like yeah. normal solid punches to this beat. Yeah, and I if guarantee you, you'll feel it. If you're driving, don't do it. Um, swerve left and right to the beat. As he, that's, dun, that may be worse. Dun, dun, dun. But slight swerve, because I admit, I do do that on the highway sometimes. Uh, but no, there's no cars around. Yeah, I will God, do it. Twist, 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 twist. I am always driving from now on. <laughs> uh, um, all right, so my music, uh, because what I like to do now, and I, I, I've always been in, into running, um, just as kind of like an aug- augment or an addition to my exercise. But two years ago, I trained for a marathon, and now I am really into distance running mm-hmm. and I need music to keep tempo so that my uh, my ca- the cadence of my strides are so that your cadence of Hyrule <laughs> the cadence of Hyrule but the cadence of my stride of, of my, my, my the length of my legs and, the, and the, the way my feet strike are always on tempo then I can keep pace a, a consistent pace because mm-hmm. the, 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 the problem with distance running is if you don't think about it you end up going too fast and burning out too early Ah, uh, okay. So the music is what keeps you going from keeping you at a steady, moderate pace. Yeah, and I've been reading. Some people like say like, "Oh, it's a crutch. You shouldn't need music." But you know what? Screw that. <laughs> it's more fun. You're not, that's the thing I'm thinking about. Like, you know what? Don't have fun doing this. Yeah. Take the fun out of Take it. Take the fun out of it. Keep it workable. Um, sometimes it work. Sometimes it's nice not having the music on. It's like I like I like to run in the parks out here, and then you can hear the birds, and you can hear the animals and stuff, and the, and the insects. But, and the, what you know, like this, like the insects. All right, super. Okay, never crickets and cicadas. That's different. Like I can hear the ants. They're <laughs> chewing. Like what are they doing? They're building something. You'd be amazed how much noise the slugs make out here in Delaware. Um, no, so my tempo is between 170 and 180 beats per minute. Okay, because I my feet strike at every quarter note. Uh-huh. It's the nerdiest thing I could think of right now, but that's that's what I do. So. Um, I could be running to half that tempo, which would be like what ninety or eighty, but that would be like slow jam R and B or some crap. I don't want to dance. I don't want to run to that. So um, all of my music is at that tempo. I'm going to guess this track you're about to select. It's all also that tempo. all that tempo. Yes, yeah. so this is from the game Shock Troopers for the Neo Geo. Um, this track is called Breakbeat Science, which is the name of a drum and bass label that I really like, um, and it is composed by Masahiko Hataya and Masaki Kase.
You're listening to Breakbeat Science from the game Shock Troopers for the Neo Geo, composed by Masahiko Hataya and Masaki Kase. This is a banger, man. I, I think ah. it's funny. I think we both got that from Michael Bridgewater. Banger. <laughs> yes, like I've heard the word before, and I even heard it in that context, but I didn't used to say it. But I feel like after hearing him say it and the way he says it, it's just... It's just kind of clicked with me. Like, it's just something that's stuck. Well, this is very, like, this is very old school jungle style, which is very British. So this is this. I love this stuff. I think it's interesting. When it first started playing, I was like, how does he run to this? But then yeah. one, two, three, it's something three, clicked, one, which I'll get into on my next pick because I don't want to. I got to bring it up a double mm-hmm. time. But this is definitely a track to run to. Yeah. And this also, is good. So, like, at this speed, I can go consistently. It can, I can run a consistent like ten to under ten minute mile, and it forces my strides to be a little bit shorter, so that I, I don't I'm not overextending. So here's a question. It's for really you. good. It's really really good. When you run to these tracks, mm-hmm. because this is a question I had because this is something that yeah. And also like music. a lot of this music comes in like mixes of like ninety to like 120 minutes, and so I that's what I was gonna ask. Like, do you typically loop the track, or do you have, or do you get like the, just a short burst of one loop of the track, mm-hmm. and then it's like just move on to the next track, and you just keep moving? Um, I have some mixes. Um, like DJ mixes, and I also have like just albums, and I, I'll make playlists. Yeah, okay. And I'll just I'll just run through the and I have like specific tracks that like really get me going, and certain playlists that really go. Because like with the right track, I can push through like anything. Oh you yeah. Know? Like there there are some hills out here, like there are no joke. Mm-hmm. Like there's no there's no mountains. Like we have the we have we're below sea level. Yeah, we had. Are we below sea level? I want to say we are supposedly considered Are we underwa- s- underwater? No, we have... You know what I mean. Our, we have the lowest, highest point of all the states in the country. I know that much. Yes. I have to look that up later. And it'll come out you, on do the you know where? Break. Do you know where it is? No. It's actually not far from here. Is it my house? No. Do you know where the, <laughs> do you know where the Concord High School is? Yes. It's down the road from there. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a sign. It says the highest point in Delaware. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, like this little tiny mound. <laughs> and then the lowest point, you just drive to the beach. <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah, so anyway, that's some dumb geography for you of our East Coast sleepy little murder town. <laughs> I know we don't. We're not that. We're better than that. We're now. better. We we are. Um, but no, I love this music. I love how noisy it is. I love how frantic the drums are. Like yeah, actually, like the crazier the drums, the better. Honestly. Yeah, I, honestly, I've I've come across a number of tracks. Like I, there's one track I didn't pick for this episode, but I came mm-hmm. closest on my my side list, which means I got to get on the show someday. But it has a similar like drum beat to mm-hmm. this and it. Where it's like, like the same drum. That sounded awesome. I want to hear it. I want to hear that. <laughs> I'm like already excited. But it's not all my short list here. <laughs> um, um, That's I, the danger of picking tracks for the show. I end up with an overflow. And we'll hang on to them. We, we can save them for another show. But all right. So what's your second tune? So we went to the pre-gaming and now we're getting to like the meat of the workout. The yeah. primary element where you're just kind of blowing. You're so you, moving to. The- so you got you got your rhythm. You've worked up to it, and now you're going. You're just going. You're yeah. getting it in. And I think this track is perfect for that mid-tear. And this track is from the game Trails of Cold Steel 2, Legend yeah. of Heroes, and it's titled Heated Mind. And it's from the Falcom sound team, but specifically Ooh. Takahiro Unisuga.
Welcome back. You're listening to Heated Mind from Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 2 for variety of consoles. <laughs> PS4, 3, Vita, Steam. Oh, yeah, you, you play it on PC? Uh-huh. Put it on, put it on PC. PC. Hey. <laughs> PC. You put it on PC. This is good. I mean, like, I knew going in you were going to pick something from Trails of Cold Steel or, or Trails of Cold Steel 2. But, it had to be oh, something. Oh, man. Yeah, so, what, so, what so, something like? Falcom system. Some Falcom system. Something from the Falcom sound system was going to be on the show. Because I almost didn't. Mm. I have a track here that I'm going to go on the show somehow or another later down the road because that track got bumped for this. But uh, mm. this is such a perfect fit for this segment of the of my track roster. Really? Because mm. yes. Yeah, so like, this, this for me is like this is like the end of the road. This is like the last mile. Push it. Go up the hill. Oh no! I uh, have a track for that. <laughs> I have a track for that too. But this track for me is okay. You're in it. Just keep a steady pace now. You're mm. moving. You got it. I'll, I'll run to this. I'll push to this. I will bike to this. And it's interesting because I have the weirdest imagination. So that. When I'm out on the jog, my mind will hear this music and it'll come up with this stupid scenario in my head that I just, it just works. Like, I'm like, I have to get up to this hill. I got to get to the end of this hill here because somebody's in need over there. I got to get to them before <laughs> yeah, it's too yeah, late. Yeah. And you just, you just come up with a fake story. Like, you know mm. how people will buy those apps where it's like, you're in a zombie apocalypse. Now run faster. The zombies are coming. I, I have heard of those. Yeah. I don't need the app. I do it on my own for free. <laughs> and I've been doing it long before the yeah, app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's funny to come up with stupid scenarios while you're running, while you're jogging mm. to the, with this kind of music. Or if you're at the gym, this is just good music to have on when you're going between all the different weight stations, doing your curls, doing your bench presses. This gives you that sense of, I can do it. I can get this in. This is yeah. fun. I'm enjoying myself. Yeah, but like, and I'm training for a reason. Something about the violins or, or the build-ups and the breakdowns, and, and specifically the Falcom sound team's music on these games, it's like, it sounds like you're, you're doing it to save the world. Yes. Like maybe, maybe you're just bench pressing. But you're doing it because you have to be strong enough to save the world. And I, and I gotta say, this is this is gonna get <laughs> it's amazing like, political very briefly, but not in a horrible way. So you know, recently there was like talk where people were saying you doing the thing where it's like, hey, you know, we're going to attribute violence to you know the video games in the situation that's going on, which of course has already been an argument that's been done since the '90s. Yeah, done but, done to death. But back then and now, I had the same thought then that I do right now, which is. When I think of video games, nine times out of ten, I'm playing to be the hero in some story. Oh, yeah. Even the most mediocre game, you're even, like a Harvest Moon game, you're still trying to be the hero of the town by creating a thriving farm to bring prosperity to the village. You're always trying to be a hero. And the music does a very good job Mm. of giving you that sense of purpose, that desire to succeed and help others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, It's fantastic. And yes, this... This is a beast of a tune. You play uh, Trails of Cold, Trails in the Sky One. The battle theme is good but relaxing. It's not not an energetic. Trails in the Sky Two, same. It's good but nothing. Uh, no is, energy. Is this is the, the usual, the, the normal battle theme. This is this the game? normal battle. So this theme. is the one you hear all the time. Yes, <laughs> and it never got I don't know tired. How I, of it. I, yeah, I was gonna say I don't know how I feel about that. Like I might get, I would might, I would hate to get tired of something like this. Like, but this. you don't. But you don't because the combat's already fun. Mm. Now they just have music that you like going over it. It's perfect. Well, let me tell you what I don't get tired of. That's my next track. Oh. And it's called Spunky. Like from Rocco's Modern Life? Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, but it <laughs> is the theme of Makoto's stage from Street Fighter Three Third Strike. Now I know why it's called Spunky. Yeah, she's, uh, she's, he's Spunky. And this is composed by Hideki Okugawa.
You're listening to the theme of Makoto, Spunky, <laughs> from Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. This is the online edition that was released on the PS4. And so this track isn't in the normal version of the game? No, it, it's just cleaned up. <laughs> oh, okay. It's just cleaned up. Uh, but the composer is still the same, Hideki Okugawa. And if you'd like to hear more from Hideki Okugawa, I played a ton of his music on Ed's when I was on Ed's show, The VG Embassy, where I focused on nothing but drum and bass music and video games. Uh, so a lot of his other tracks have a drum and bassy sound too. Yes, it's all the same. It's a similar tempo. Um, okay. And so that whole episode is about that. So this, I always think of this music when I'm running, um, you know, where, you know, Alapocus Park. Yes. Um, so there's a there's like there's a cliffs. So I run down this long, long hill, and there's actually a waterfall. There are ruins of like an old like industry that was down there. There's a terrible fire there like two, two or three years ago, and um, and there's a cliff face. And so when I start running through there, I, I always think of like this this music because it makes me think of like forests and running through trees and stuff like that oh, like pushing through the brush yeah yeah it does and so when i run through there it just it's that's what it feels like it feels like it feels ancient an ancient ruin yeah. exploration adventure and it's always a really good like midway point for me too so it's because it's in between um a park and the city okay because yeah. once i once i break through that then i'm then i'm in like the city so it's almost yeah. like it literally it does feel like an adventure like okay i gotta get through this forest yeah and at the other side i can buy supplies and rest at the end now coming back though is going up that hill. That is the worst hill in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am not a fan of like steep hill runs oh, or bikings. It's so <clears throat> steep and it's so long. But this stuff like this really gets me through it, and it really makes me like think about that stuff too. I, I think it, maybe it's because like my experience of playing so much Street Fighter Three, because in, in the stages in these games are like really almost pastoral. That actually yeah. makes me think too, because I remember mm-hmm. I need to get back on it, or maybe just get a brand new one because I'm a tall and heavy guy. But years ago, I bought a bike, thinking that would be my first attempt to go, I'm getting into fitness or whatever. Biking is fun. Mm -hmm. So maybe a summer or two ago, I want to say it was last summer, more likely, I decided to take it out and go for a bike ride. So I'm riding the bike. I'm like, wow, it's it's just like it was when I was a kid. I can still ride a bike. I haven't forgotten. This is fun. Oh, boy. And I'm riding, and I'm riding. (laughs) And I get to this weirdly steep hill. And as I'm pedaling and going nowhere, and pedaling and going nowhere, I start to be like, why do people enjoy this? This is horrible. <laughs> Biking uphill is awful. I know. It's it's getting to the downhill part. I think it's what people really like. Oh, yeah. The downhill felt fun. It was like, the only thing that scares me about downhill is like, like a like, tiny speck of pebble in the ground. Oh, it'll knock and you, you pop it. And there you go flying and tumbling. Mm. And you have like... Your leg is separated into three segments. I know. And then you're like, you call me up. And you're like, Rob, I need a lift. And I come up and I'm like, hey, Purnell. What's popping? All my joints. <laughs> my body. All right. So now's a good time for this. Uh, okay. About an hour ago, I wrote on the VGM podcast fans Facebook group uh, that we're about to record. And does anybody have any questions for us? So, Purnell, Justin Schneider asks. Are you going to ask him now? I thought you were going to just ask the one. But okay. I'm going to ask a couple. But I had to think there, about some of these. I know. Me too. So just to make it up. I'm going to. What's your favorite non-video game turned video game? I don't think I understand this one. Okay. I think it's football. No, I think he's like non-video game turned video game. So like it might be a movie that got a video game release. Oh. So some might say lately that this amazing Spider-Man is one because, yeah, Spider-Man mm-hmm. is a comic book property, but there was a recent mo- game that came out that was more based on the movie franchise mm-hmm. than, the ga- than the comics, and that's become a huge... Huge joy for folks. Yeah, actually, yeah, anything anything comic book related. There was the good. Lion King from back in the day. I remember like that a lot. Oh, as frustrating as it was, as well as Aladdin. Aladdin for me, for me, it's Aladdin, and I like both the Genesis and the uh, Super Nintendo. I like them both. There it's was just uh, in different ways. You know what? I'll say one other. Mm-hmm. And honestly, we might have to revisit these questions next week when I can plan better. Cause I got a feeling there's something I'm not remembering. But there was a recent game I played that was based off of a comic book series that I really liked as a game. And I hadn't even heard of the comic until the game. That was um, Night Chasers, um, Battle Chasers. Battle Chasers. Battle Chasers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you played that on an episode. <laughs> yeah, we, we played it for the, at, one, at, the, at, at, at that one podcast episode where we did at the at too, the, many, too Many Games. But was that is the other where that place usually is. That was terrible. Yeah, that one. We played it there. <laughs> the one we've, we've intentionally forgotten about. The, the one we intentionally don't tell anybody about that we're talking about now. Don't go to that. But, like, yeah, it's a very mm-hmm. good RPG. Very... Unlike 
what you'd expect. It breaks a lot of tropes, like the tanky character is actually the healer. <laughs> okay. Weird stuff like that. Okay, so some of these I'm definitely going to save. Um, here we go. Uh, what board? Uh, Bobby Arson um, from One Up Funk says, "What board games do you and Pernell play together?" We play everything. Literally everything. <laughs> Literally everything. Like if I have a board game, I'm playing it with Rob. So we recently played a board game called Ponzi Scheme. Yeah, Pon- and for the record, to not spoil too much, we are actually doing an episode in the near future based around board games. So we're not going to go into too many of them because that'd be a spoiler. But we can name a few now just because I don't think I'm going to bring these up right, on that so episode. We, just, we, can, we can just list the last games that we played, right? Literally. Like, we just played one called Ponzi Scheme well, recently. But we, that, that was a whole night. Before that, we played Camel Up, which was like a, a gambling game, essentially. Like a betting game on camels. Yeah, camels are running around a track, and you're betting on who's going to win the races and who's going to lose the races. Right. And there's just dice rolls and moving the camels, but they can, like, land on top of each other, and it's it's fun. But then the weird yeah. element, aside from the stack that the camels can stack, is that there's two camels that are going backwards on the course. <laughs> opposite direction. And if the two camels, if the camels that are going backwards meet with the camels that are mm-hmm. going forwards, then the camels will stack, and then the backwards camel will take them back in the race. That's very good. And Before that, we weird. played uh, Tiny Towns. Yeah, Tiny Towns is like... That's good. That's it, like... Heavy spatial reasoning. You're building a town using cubes to form tetramino shapes, right? Which can then become buildings. Yeah, and then you take the cubes off the board, and then you put a building down. And then relationships of those buildings to other buildings give you points at the end of the game. It's it's surprisingly challenging, and then once you get your head around it, it's really fun. But then there's Ponzi scheme, which Rob is trying to avoid. Oh, I know a Ponzi scheme and the game, in which I love, the, but I get stressed out every time I play. So the, the premise of Ponzi scheme is just like the title says: it's a Ponzi scheme. Everyone's in it to make money, but being that it is a Ponzi scheme, you are doomed to sink under the weight of your own debt. Mm-hmm. So the goal of the game is to take out bank loans to buy stock in industries, but go bankrupt second fastest Be- or not even that because <laughs> you go bankrupt the slowest because you will lose you will lose it's just a matter of betting on somebody else losing faster exactly because you're just taking out loans every turn and then like you see the percentages on the cards and you're like oh my god and you're making i'm gonna die and you make clandestine bargains and what that yeah. means is oh, i look at sorry. rob and i know he's got a property that i want to go hey rob i'll make you an offer so you put money into an envelope mm-hmm. that only he'll see none of the other players can see it and i go i want to buy that from you and Rob looks at the money, and he can either accept, make, accept yeah. the money and go, hey, man, good deal. I'll take the money. Here's oh, your property. Yeah, yeah. Or he can scoff at it, or laugh maniacally, and then put the same amount of money back in and force me to give him mine instead. Or, or you could do what I did to, to Christy. My wife was just like, I could tell that she was going to lose real fast, so I lowballed her on everything. <laughs> she was so She was mad. livid, too. <laughs> she was so mad. Um, okay, uh, just, just a couple more here. We have... Um, we have Mike Levy, Mike Levy, Mike Mike Levi's says, "Who has the best eyebrow game in the VGM podcast scene?" Well, dude, it's Pernell. Yeah, I work my eyebrows. Dang it, I put those things to work because I make lots of weird expressions. That's my thing. That's my claim to fame. The eyebrows <laughs> just come along with it. Yeah, the I, you're here. The eyebrows are along for the ride. Exactly. Uh, Drew Mackey asks, "Who would win in a fight between the two of you?" Oh, well, we, we wouldn't fight. We no, team up. We team up and beat you. Exactly. That's right. And then um, Daniel Lafton writes, Lafton. <laughs> I think it's Lawton. I'm pretty sure it's Lafton. Lafton! I'm sure he'll correct me. That was a great show, actually. Yeah, Lafton. My, Daniel Daniel Lafton says, will Rob ever stop playing Final Fantasy X? I think we all know the answer to that. You know, we all have our own comfort games. <laughs> you know? Some people play Mega Man. We Some had people to play Tetris. Some people do all of that and play Final Fantasy X. We had to answer that on this episode because we just opened up the whole thing with a Final Fantasy X discussion, so that question showing up into the show oh, was that. hysterical. There's actually some really good questions in this thread. We will get to them in the next week. For now, what's your final track of the show? All right, so your final a- game track of the show. So you're doing a workout. Yes. You got your rhythm going, and now you're moving to a solid pace. You're getting things in, but you're getting tired. You're getting that slog, but you're not done. You haven't gotten the full brunt of your workout in. So you're starting to slow down, but you know you got to pick it up. And that's usually when the hardest music has to come in. The music makes you go, do sit down, get up. I thought that was your last track. Oh, no. (laughs) I actually went and found what I consider to be probably one of the hardest BGM tracks I've heard in years. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. What about it? Oh, well, I'll let the track speak for itself. Yeah. The game is called Death End Request, and the track title is called Death End Syndrome. 
And the track composer is Gesh Hoku Kaiji. Welcome back. You're listening to Death End Syndrome from the game Death End Request, composed by Geshoku Kaiji for the PlayStation 4. I thought you were going to play something hard. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I should have went harder than this. What the heck oh, was I thinking? Oh my gosh, Pernell. This may be the heaviest track I will ever pick for this show. That's amazing. So, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, like this, this track, well, I'll go on to the, the workout component in a second, but when I first heard this in the game proper, it hit me really hard. I was like, wow, this is what I want out of a boss theme. It puts the pressure on. The environment is like a freaking hellscape looking place, which up until that point was not the case. <laughs> and you're fighting a ginormous, gross spider monster thing. Cool. And this music is playing over it. So the premise of Death and Request is that you are... A, pro- a developer at a programming company, a video game co- programming company, whose MMORPG was about to come out. Call it was like call it World Odyssey, World's Odyssey. Mm-hmm. And pr- like a month or two prior to release, the mm-hmm. game gets shut down. They take the game down. You don't release it. So a couple months later, well, also in the middle of this, one of your coworkers disappears, like just vanishes. You don't know what happened to him. A couple months later, you, the character gets an email from the coworker. From inside the game? From inside the game. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. It's, it sounds goofy at first. Well, I mean, it's a game. I mean. So the guy goes and finds out that the person is inside the game as an avatar. So he boots into the game as a little avatar character. And it comes to find out that she's in there. She doesn't know where her actual body is. And she can't get out. Hmm. So, and also the game itself, when it, it was like still in a glitchy state when they shut the game down. So as a result... There are glitches kind of spiraling off throughout the game. Like you can see as you're walking around, even that there's image, like the image tearing and things of that nature. But it's oh, intentional cool. within yeah. the game world. So at this moment, the main character is concerned and he's not sure what to do because, of course, they didn't decipher that, you know, they don't want to risk her dying in the game because she might die for real. They don't know. So they determined that the only way to get out is by triggering something called the ending engage because they designed this feature. Because people have a tendency to get hooked on MMORPGs. So the premise was that when you get to a specific component in the game that the, that the developers care to be the quote-unquote ending of the game, it will kick you out. So Because oh, also keep in mind... It's a key to keep you from like like just doing too much. Yes. Yeah. Oh, because also funny. factor, and this is like the future, quote-unquote. Okay. So it's actually like, you know, you put a headset on and you're like, really, your brain interfaces with the game. Yeah, right. So it's not just like you're typing and stuff. You're playing for real. Yeah. So basically... You're running around this world, and you're meeting NPCs, and you're trying to solve a mystery on the outside of the game world, too, to try to figure out why she was kidnapped, why who put her in the game, what's happening, and what bigger, weird mystery exists around this World's Odyssey game. And it honestly gets to be pretty cool of a plot, though it gets a little bit, you know, future wacky techy eventually, too, but... 
when you make a plot like this, you kind of have no choice but to go down that. Yeah, they, they were making a game to do that. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like that. That sounds cool. And this is this is music that plays when everything gets really crazy. This is just the boss thing. Mm. This is just the boss thing. This is the boss thing. I it's, like, and it's brutal. It, this is some brutal music. Yeah, and honestly, when it comes to a workout regimen, I think it fits there appropriately because when you're at a workout mm-hmm. and you get to that point where you're starting to feel tired. You want to go home, but then if you have an instructor, he's like, no, you got more in you. That's your body telling you you're tired and you need to kick it up. Yes. You need to tell your body to shut up. Yes, that, 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 and that's how you get stronger. That's how you're able to do more. When you push through that wall, that is when you get stronger. And I got to tell you, I'm if still not, struggling if, at that sometimes, yeah. but I'm getting better. Like there's the, the, the freaking sit, the, the hover seated wall <laughs> punch or a wall seat. I don't even know what the heck is that even the technical term is, but L sit. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, L sit. You're yeah. at a, like a sitting against the wall at a mm-hmm. 90 degree angle with no chair. Yeah. And you have to just hold that position forever. Yeah. And then while you're doing that, the gym, I go to the guys like, okay, now punch 100 times. <laughs> and then when you're done, you get a five second break and then you got to punch 150 times. And if you're really being particularly bad about it, he'll have you do 100 punches, but he'll put a 20 pound weight in your lap. Oh, jeez. So. It is tired. That's and good. It hurts. That's why it's good to have a personal trainer. Yeah, because, because I they'll, can't they'll, do that much alone. Yeah, you, you won't think of the. You won't even think of to do that alone. Yeah. Yeah, like I need him to yeah. actually hold my feet in place because I slide forward naturally because my body's like slink and I'll slide down the oh, wall. Oh wow, wow! But he'll stand on my feet, so my legs have nowhere to go, and it's just like me having like ah. <laughs> but this music I can hear playing in my head during those oh, scenarios because yeah, this, this is, is the pain. This, this is you is pushing the, through the pain. Yes. Oh man, I like that. All right, so my last track is is the push through the pain. This is from Need for Speed 2015. This is called The Crew. Um, I think this is music when you're meeting, like, your crew. They got your back. Yeah, or, like, you're racing them. I'm assuming you're racing somebody in this game. And the uh, the artist is Fotec, which is awesome. So Fotec is an old, old old-school drum and bass producer. Had some music released on... Uh, Wipeout Excel, okay. or Wipeout 2064, or whatever it's called. Um, and he also does a whole lot of uh, movie soundtracks and stuff like that under his, his real name, which I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But he's really, really good. He produced some music for this game. This is from Need for Speed 2015 from Fotec. Uh-huh. This is the crew from the game Need for Speed 2015, composed by Fotech with a K. Oh, this is so good. Oh, I am definitely digging this track. Yeah, so in the in the world of drum and bass, this is this subgenre is called neurofunk. Ooh. I don't know why, but neurofunk is like what it, it feels like it's like poking you in the brain. It's like it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh. just sending the funk directly to your neural center. Yeah, I like it. I and like I'm this stuff. I'm fine with it. Yeah, it's something about it. Like it's it, it's it's a, it's it's the four four beat, but it's like 
It's got some kind of shuffle to it, but it's so fast. I gotta say that I bet this oh. track you mentioned earlier you think this is a track for when you meet them. I think this is just a race stage. It could be like a race, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine them introducing you to a character like, hi, I'm Pernell. Chop, chop. No, no, this is, <laughs> like, this is when you meet too the, much. This is like when you meet like um like your character's like mother and like she's dying and like, Oh, I have to go race to earn I have to do street racing to earn money to save my mother from I don't know, cancer. And it's like, Mom, Gotta pay for I'm going to go out there. I bought you flowers. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> Jap, Jap. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> this will be the heaviest track to play at a nursing home I've ever heard. Oh, man. This stuff gets me going. So, yeah, this this is like my run up the hill music. Imagine if this was the tr- music that played during the racing game where all the main ca- all the characters were senior citizens who... <laughs> That's how they, that's how they kept themselves alive, like energetically. Like they would once yeah. a week, they would like do like manic death racing. <laughs> it keeps them sharp, you know. Yeah, <laughs> they play cribbage Monday through Friday, but Saturdays out the Death Valley. Yeah, like they're all they all plan to like steal the keys from like you know the guy working the counter at like you know the the home. <laughs> That would be even stranger if it wasn't that they oh. all had cars. It was just that they just other. stole the one guy who works there's like turbocharged race car. It's like, it's like a minivan. And so like, they have to always return it in pristine condition, which means they oh can't even God. race aggressively. I would watch this movie. This would be the best movie ever. It would be like uh, Fast and Furious, but like 20 years from now. <laughs> <laughs> Alzheimer's dilemma. Actually, um, the newest one is, is uh, Jason Statham and The Rock. Jason Statham's like 50-something. Really? Can you believe that? Well, clearly all that racing has kept him young. Kept him young. All that racing. That's right. And The Rock, I don't know. The guy's just a... a he's a rock. He's a, he's, a, he's a rock. He is a rock. He, he is a mineral. He's, he is a mineral. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a walking pile of compressed minerals. He's a mineral, man. All right, I'm going to turn this track down, and we're going to get into the part of the show. Oh, we're not done yet. You're not done. Get back on the horse. Get back on the bench. Get, get back doing the thing you've been doing because we're going the bonus round. Bonus round. Bonus round. Ah. Bonus round is where we play covers and remixes and arrangements of video game music based on our theme. Pranel, what did you find for the show? So funny enough, the track I picked would be played when you're about done your workout. So the idea is that, you know, you've pushed yourself to the limit. You're burning up. And your muscles are just killing you. Your workout is done. But, of course, you're not supposed to just stop working out. You're supposed to kind of cool down, kind of keep moving so that your muscles don't, like, tighten up and get all pained out and mm. whatever. So <laughs> the idea is that you want to play some trash. So just make it kind of nice, relaxed, and maybe do, like, some, like, like some curls. or Not curls, but just, like, walk around, like a walk-in-place thing. Maybe some twists. Just something to keep you limber. Yeah. So Keep the blood going. I think this track is perfect for that. And it's done by a guy that I haven't picked from the show for picked for the use on the show for a long time. Oh, really? He goes by the name Gras Pixels. And oh, the track yeah. is a remix of my favorite track from the game Secret of Mana, A Curious Tale. And it's a good one too. All right. <laughs>
love the, yeah. That's like the, the 80s sitcom ending right I'm there. I'm glad you said it because that's exactly it. That's the exact feel uh, I got from that. It's like a sitcom. That was a feel-good tune. Yes, wasn't I liked it? it? Yeah. So that was a remix of A Curious Tale from the game Secret of Mana done by Gross Pixels. I love how I actually had to read the mat even though it's clear that I know the dark track. <laughs> but this is this is the perfect cap to a workout for me, mm-hmm. this type of track. Mm-hmm. And... This one specifically hit me in all the right spots. It, it made me feel good. It was uplifting. It felt like Rob mentioned, like a sitcom jingle, whether it be an opener or a closer. It just it just feels good. It feels good. It feels good, and you're meeting the family, and, and the everyone's end, smiling and giving you a thumbs up. And at the end, I even did like just one of those <laughs> posts like you do on TV. It's like, da, da, da. I feel like you were it doing it because we didn't even talk about it, and you just started like doing like the pose, and I'm like, it's like you're already thinking about it. That's like, right. It, like we didn't even have to say it. We didn't have to talk about it. It was just it's You're like gold. it's family matters. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do. All right, so my track is. Um, I'm sorry. Were you cool? Were you done? No. Okay. There's more. There's more. So so I want to so I want to talk about his name is Gross Pixels. Yeah, Gross Pixels. He's a great guy. He does fantastic tunage. He has a gross amount of music. Now I I also want to talk about my favorite my my favorite food. Um. So it's catfish. Right? You didn't it's bring delicious. it. That's the it's no. Delicious. It's 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 the potato chips. It's the I've been tr- I I've, I've been eating chips still. I admit, but I've been trying to kick them because mm-hmm. as delicious as they are, they really are like a huge kick in the pants for like weight. And if you're just counting calories, it doesn't seem like as much because you're like, hey, 410 calories for the bag, but I'm already eating like 2,000 calories. I can fit that in there. Yeah. But one 410 out of a bag of chips is not a lot of food for 14 calories, and it's the other stuff in addition to the 14 calories. That's, that's a right. real hit. Yeah, so. you, can, you can't just look at those calorie counts. But um, yeah, also like if you're only eating so much, if you if if you're eating the right amount of calories for the day, but like 40 percent of those calories is coming from junk food, like that's not good. Exactly, <laughs> sugar is the real beast. Yeah, sugar and and all that stuff. Um, you need a you need a balance of all that. Like the, you need a, you need good you need fat you need salt. You need all that stuff, but too much of any of that is just going to wreck you. Bad news, bad, bad news. All right, so my track is is my warm up song now, and I am obsessed with it. When I go to play DDR, but now I say DDR, I play Step Mania. Now, let me rewind this. When you say warm up song, is it your warm up song to a workout, or is it your warm up song to a workout that's actually in DDR? Yeah, but for a session, when I'm going to play like an hour. Uh-huh. I warm up to this song. But as I was saying, it's in the game. Like you pick the song in the game yes. to dance to. Yeah, because this is a very popular song right now. Okay. And so there's a lot of people in the community writing charts for this song. So um so <laughs> this is my warm up track. Um and it is from League of Legends and it is called Pop Stars. Have you heard of the song for now? Yes and no. This is the track that if I'm not mistaken, Riot actually con they actually created either either they commissioned one or or they form their own sort of K-pop group to perform the track. Yes. So when this came out in November of last year, within the first month, it reached 100 million views. 100 million in <sighs> one month. And today, it's up to 255 million. Insane. This song is awesome. Um, okay, so it's pre- it, the it's composed or it's it's performed by K Da K D A. Which stands for, which I re, I found out stands for kills, deaths, assists. Now I'm positive that Riot actually put them together. Oh, they absolutely did. the The composer, um, I had to, which is so weird, I had to do with digging to figure out the actual composer of the music. His name is Sebastian Nehand, um, and uh, Sebastian Nehand is a composer for other Riot games. He does some of the music. Oh, so he works at Riot. He works at Riot. Um, and he's been there since 2014. But the performers and singers are Soyan and Miyan from the K-pop group G Idol. And then there's also Madison Beer and Jaira Burns. And they are um American singers. I actually give you a little bit of a funny like like funny like side trivia nitbit here. Mm-hmm. So a friend of mine that I used to hang out with over in New York, but she eventually moved over to that area of the country. Mm-hmm. She designed most of the skins for League of Legends characters. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, that's how I learned about the pop stars thing in the first yeah, one. So, she was like talking them up like, oh, the thing we did. <laughs> so this was, this is me. So the, the characters in the game, the four, four of the female characters in the game, it's like, it's like them singing and they're, this is like their pop group and they wrote this song 
to promote the world championships from last year mm-hmm. and you can buy the skins of of the pop characters in the game and play as them but the song's amazing it's called pop stars from league of legends i want to be performed by kda <laughs> Pop stars, Pernell. We are pop stars. Or are we? <laughs> we are. Oh. All right. La, that, la, 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 that was pop stars by KDA, composed by Sebastian Nihand, Nahand, and performed by Soyan and Mian from G Idol and Madison Beer and Evelyn. Um, I keep wanting to hear you say Madison Square Garden. Every time I say <laughs> Madison Beer, I'm like, present the Madison Square Garden. I think that's where the championships were held. Hmm. I can't remember. Um, but no, it's interesting because. Like not only did those singers perform as the characters in the game and like do the sing like 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 they're supposed to be each one of these characters in the game. They for the music video, which is all like uh, the three D animation of them dancing and stuff, they did the all the motion capture. Mm-hmm. So like like the the performers actually also did the dancing and then translated that to three D. Mm-hmm. And it's what's really it, the music video is amazing if you want to look it up. But um, the championships of last year, they all performed it together on stage. And it was like an augmented reality thing where like they were dancing with their 3D counterparts. Oh, that would be And awesome they were like flying in the air and stuff. It's really neat. Like it was super impressive. So, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, get it's so catchy. It. It's so catchy. Making up the words to the song. Wow, wow, yeah. wow, wow. It makes sense. Like you listen to it and it's like, oh, there's some Korean and there's some English because there's like half Korean, half English um, singers in, in, the, in the group. So I hope they do more. This is the only song they ever made. Yeah, but that may change come like a year, like maybe even coming up mm. next year for this year's term championship, they may do another one. I would love it. I would love it. I think it's so cool. So for more information on the bonus round part of our show, go to rhythmandpixels.com. 
we'll have links to the band camps and sound clouds and apple bot- butter all of, all of the apple butters <laughs> to you say that a lot, apple butter. Because it's so delicious. Oh, so good. Um, we can download the music and support the artists, apple butter. All right. Thanks for joining us on episode 19-7 of Rhythm and Pixels. This was the VGM workout. And man, was it a hit. So I think it's funny we picked this track as our going out tune, but Rob hadn't heard it yet. So as he started to go onto the statement, he heard the horns kicking. He got this look like what? <laughs> horns? I didn't, I didn't know you didn't think you saw that, Pernell. <laughs> oh, I noticed. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> oh man, this is fun though. I love this track. I, I like so the much. Uh, I like the octave bass. Do 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 do. do. It is great. It's like they think it's, I think it's perfect for this episode too because the track plays on the final run up from her, of her the final leg of her journey to get to school on time <laughs> and it's just oh, a run through yeah, the subway yeah. and she has to do battle against three sports groups right that's the game right it's kendo rage she's she's going to school and she's fighting like monsters that only she can see or something well no she's she's fighting normal monsters that everyone can see oh, okay but it's just they're just impeding her progress to get to school <laughs> that's just how they wrote the english version the japanese version it was like a whole other story oh, right we talked about that yeah that's that's but, Pretty cool, actually. I love it. Yeah. But this stage, she has to fight a volleyball group, a uh, tennis star, <laughs> and like a one. I can't remember the other one. It was like a football player right. or something. I can't remember. It's been a long All time. Right. The track's name is Triathlon. I don't think that's something. But that's why it's called Triathlon. It sounds fun. It's all the sports stuff. I don't think that's something I can handle. Oh, I see. Oh, you mean at the real triathlon? No. Oh, no. I have a buddy who's, I think he's come close to doing one. I have one friend who absolutely smashed one, but me. Mm. If I even were to even consider that, I'm like 10 years out. Maybe, <laughs> and maybe then if it like, was like biking downhill and then to like a light jog and then like the backstroke and a little like... Or eating a pie a followed f- by an ice cream <laughs> cone followed by some catfish. Man, that is just dinner. Yeah, it's just tr- one dinner. heck of a triathlon. <laughs> let me tell you what. Oh, man. All right. So um, next week is our Patreon live streamed episode so if you're a palooza if you're a patreon member you get to uh, hang out with us this thursday this coming thursday and we play music from mostly play music from uh listeners so even if you're not a patreon member patreon member please send us an email rhythm and pixels at hotmail.com send us an email to say hi or you can send us uh track suggestions or or topic suggestions anything anything at all we we can just talk I kid you not, he's not lying. I mean, well, yeah, nice. we actually enjoy the emails that we get too. So mm-hmm. if you just want to talk about your day, I don't know. Yeah, we'll read. We'll, we'll, we'll read about it on the air. No, we won't. That's <laughs> personal business, possibly. That's I don't all. Know. That's all personal. But if you want to get up all in our business, check out the website rhythmandpixels.com. There you have access to uh, all of our episodes because not all of them are in our podcast feed. Um, you get full track listings from all the episodes and links to everything else that we're doing. Check us out on uh, Facebook and Instagram. And Twitter, it's Rhythm and Pixels, all one word. We have a Facebook group called Rhythm and Pixels Chat. Mm-hmm. We yeah. pretty much gab in there, play games here and there, and yeah. just, just have talking. a good time. There's the uh, the VGM podcaster, VGM podcast fans uh, group on uh, on Facebook, created by Alex Messenger. Always want to give that a shout out because there's a lot of really nice people in there. And I also mm-hmm. got outright. I may as well just plug it on the show for the first time in ages. Oh my so, god, Pernell. Oh my god. Oh hushy. <laughs> so um, in addition to like the show, I also do like game reviews here and there yes. for the SML podcast. Though lately, SML. I haven't. SML. You, you say that so fast. Like s- someone might listen is what it stands for. SML. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing a lot of game reviews lately. Wow. We should wrap is this it up. Is it storming? It is some thunder. We should wrap this up. My car windows are down, so yes, All we right. should. Oh, are they down? Yes. You should go do that now. Yeah, pause. <laughs> And we're back. Yeah, it was raining. All right. Wow. That was some serious thunder that we just heard. Yeah, now I'm soaked. <laughs> You're all wet. My car windows were cracked, so there's a bit of water in the car, but better to get out there now than to have waited and gotten a puddle to sit in. Yeah. All right, so you do um, video game reviews on the SML podcast? Yes, and I've been doing a lot more of them lately. So like, it's become like... The reason I haven't written for like, Hey Poor Player is because I don't want to. Because I review so many for the SML, which I'm not complaining about, mm-hmm. 
but that means that's time I can't play another game to write about. Yeah. That makes any sense. So, mm. I review a lot of games. <laughs> but definitely check that out because you do review a ton of games. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. Like, I, you might hear me comment every once in a while. I was like, what do you... I'm, I'm busy doing nothing. <laughs> that's my line of... My usual line. So... For me, that is literally what I mean when I say it. Because like, I'm always doing a lot of game reviews. And it's just like general stuff that isn't the stuff that I'm thinking I should be doing. But I'm doing stuff. <laughs> oh, God. So many games. So many things. And then I just got Yu-Gi-Oh, too. So it's like, whoops. Yu-Gi-Oh. It's just an excuse to yell magic hats out loud <laughs> in public. I love that joke. Um, oh, so and if you'd like to support the show... You can uh, just share it with people. Just tell people about it. Or you can go to patreon.com slash rhythm and pixels. Um, and if you support us there, you get access to our monthly uh, live stream show and um, whatever else we decide to put up there for our listeners. And we like to give you all shout outs at the end of every episode. So we'd like to thank that Nick Walker, Mike Myers, Martine Arginius, Steve Miller, the autistic gamer 89, Cameron Worma, Christopher Shenstrom, Bobby Arson of One Up Funk, Wicked Sephiroth, OK Impala, hey. Carlito of the Heroes 3 podcast, Michael Bridgewater from the Forever Sound Version podcast, Brian Pitt, Morton Gangso, Chris Marie, what's up? Marie! How you doing? Uh, the Last Weekend, Jupiter Jazz, Solace Sanctuary, Damian Beckles, Joe Vassalo, Chris Steenerson, Alex, the messenger, messenger, the patron saint of all VGM podcasts, and David Smith, thank you all, all so much, so much for your continued support of the show. It means a great deal to us. It's extremely appreciated. Yes. You have no idea. And by all means, feel free to write in and communicate just as well. I mean, yeah, you're a patron, but you're also a friend, more or less. Yeah, you're a part of the show now. Yeah. So we expect work from you. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. We don't. But so. yes. Gets well, to get started on the next episode script. I mean, this is all scripted. Oh, jeez. Terrible. Off the script. <laughs> oh, we're already off script. Um, so that's what we got. Uh, so, yeah, next week we have our Patreon exclusive show. And then coming up soon is the birthday of the Dreamcast. It's soon, baby. It's, it's the only game console whose day of birth I remember. <laughs> it's the only one. You know, it's very important for us as people, as humans. As a species. As friends. As consumers. As consumers. <laughs> I blanked. Anyway, thank you all so much for listening. My name is Rob Nichols. And I'm Pernet. This is Rhythm and Pixels. Good night. And remember, everybody thinks, when people think of exercise and working out, they think of these brutal regimens where you're chugging egg holes that are just like cracked and spun into a cup. And then running 50 miles and then beating your head into a sandbag. All oh, that weird stuff that they do on TV to get their glutes and their gams and their grits and their groups. Whatever they call it. Whatever. But in reality, exercise doesn't have to be any of it. Exercise is just you being active in some way, shape, or form to keep your body active and moving and fit. And while it may not seem like it now, because I know we got a lot of younger listeners too. Trust me when I say... You will regret it. <laughs> you just let it go idle for too long. And it's never too late to start. Exactly. Start small if you need to. Heck, yeah, I started small. I'm still starting small. I haven't quite gotten to the peak of running or doing anything yet, but I'm still moving. I'm trying. You can start light. You know, get up. Like when you go to put your food in the microwave, stand on your tippy toes for the entire duration of the clock. Seems easy. And it is. But it's also not. Um, also, a fun thing I've learned. There's a lot of very simple things that you, a lot of simple motions you can do that sound easy if I describe them to you, but then when you try to do them, it feels like someone's taking a shovel to your legs. <laughs> but that's the point. That you is can, the point. You can do any number of things. Just the point being, be active, move your body, and honestly, you can make you can make it fun too. One thing I'm actually starting to do is come up with an exercise for a game where every time I die, I perform this exercise. Now, obviously, it can't be a game where dying is a constant. Otherwise, I will I will die. But, you know, a game where dying isn't too common to the point where you can say, okay, I died here. I'm going to do, like, a couple sit-ups or something. You know, anything. Just be freaking active. Get up and do something. You'll be glad you did. 
Shut up and jam. Guy Dan? Shut up and jam, Guy Dan. Side story. Dibo, 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 Dibo.